Oh. Uh, wow. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Mm. I never can So, okay. So, uh, I guess we can get started and uh, still is quite good. Still, like I expect that, that tendency there, but uh, it's still quite full. So um, we will mostly talk about talk, talk about filters today. It's pretty simple stuff. So also have a little bit recap of last time. So um, yes, I cannot hear you properly here. Uh, see, like uh, you can hear me anything or like can you? Um, I can hear you, but it's not clear. Oh, let's see. Maybe it's the volume. Let, let's see if I can. Uh, now I can hear it a little bit louder. Mike, this is audio though. Let's see. Still, like, is that better? Like, or worse? Like, um, I guess, like, the volume control is on your other side. I can, like, um. Yeah, I can increase. I have increased your volume, but. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of um, noise than your voice. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I guess I. Um, the same last, last it's like last time, it's also like that? Or like. Yes. Um, okay. So, uh, I don't know what I can do like, with the. I, I'm, let me see like, where's the mic actually. Uh, where's the mic? There. Somewhere. So um. But uh, don't worry about. It. Okay. Uh, I maybe I will just try to speak louder or something, and then I um. Uh, actually, one other uh, student also asked me like if I can televise to somewhere else. I might say it would be difficult, and then um, maybe I will just try to screencast what, what I'm giving. Um, but I can promise it actually work because I, um, if I want to demo or play a video, maybe the laptop, because I, I'm also wanting it in top, I, I mean, inside a virtual box, if you realize that. So it takes up uh, some computational power. So, but anyway, let, let me just get started. Um, as I said, I will recap a little bit. So, uh, so we. This is about computer vision, so so um, lots of stuff will be related to images. So let's start with image again. So this is just some example of different different kind of images, as you realized last time, and uh, also like different representations. So uh, if we have binary images like this, only black and white, then each each of the pixel will be like just one or zero. So we can have like grayscale images that's pretty common. Then like typically as it's like eight bit uh, precision will be like zero to two fifty five, and uh, we can also have color images. Uh, here I am only showing uh, one uh, color channel, basically the white channel here, and this is another color image that uh, have both. I mean all three different channels like uh, red, green, and blue. In this case, blue, green, and red. So um, actually, it's interesting. Like um, for some, for example, if you play with Python and uh, OpenCV and so on, the representation is actually flip. So you need to be careful. If you look <coughs> ugly, uh, if you load the image, it's basically the channel is actually flip. So sometimes, like like this one, they have the first um, because uh, if you have the image, right, like. Uh, color image will be like like three different matrices. Three matrices, right? Uh, I should I should draw like three matrices, like stack of matrices. So for some representation, they will have like the first matrix will be red, uh, green, and blue. Uh, for example, in MATLAB, but uh, in some other cases, for example, in OpenCV and uh, Matplotlib, 
uh, they will have like blue, green, and red. So you you need to, if you display it, it doesn't look white. Probably your color channel is flipped. So uh, and uh, th this is just okay. Uh, a very rough example of sampling. Uh, actually, we'll, we'll talk more about sampling like, next time. So I will just fit through this. And uh, idea of resolution, I'm sure you know about that already. Uh, this is like DPI, like dot per inches. And uh, also, like typically, we talk the resolution of an image with, with just how many pixels there. Um, for example, like for example, like this screen here, I think it's like sixteen hundred times what twelve hundred something like that. The current uh, resolution, probably less than that because I'm I'm kind of like uh, this is a like a old kind of display. So anyway, uh, I'm also like I I just want to emphasize last time we talk about like radio metric resolution that would be like the the resolution of the position per pixel so just try not to be confused with the image resolution so for example in this case the radio metric resolution uh for like eight bits four bits two bits and so on yes so okay quickly fit for that so another concept I'd like to talk about just histogram so I, i'm sure you know what's histogram from maybe many other different classes maybe a little bit introductory statistics. It's basically just counting, like, uh, in this case, for example, if you're grayscale images, you have uh, different values for each pixel can be from 0 to 255, right? So you just count for each of the uh, values, like how many pixels for per values. So for example, like, I have look at this light looking lady here. I'm not sure light looking or not. So you have just look at this face and compute the histogram, and um, that basically you see like some. This is like so many values. It's, uh, it's that color. It's kind of white. Probably it's like this region here is correspond to here, and then there's uh, some dark color here. Is probably the the hair here, something like that. And most of the color. I mean, I mean the most of the gray scale is around this range here. Is probably this face here. And um, we have another histogram like like this one for this patch. So, and uh, histogram is useful sometimes. Okay, one one of the uses is just for matching. Sometimes, like if you want to match, for example, one one shape with another shape, uh, one possible feature is like the histogram. Uh, and you can just compute the histogram of your target and histogram of your source and try to match them if it's close and you say, oh, okay, it, it matches, they match. And another application, like a uh, use case is like for, like this one is a histogram equalization. So you start with an image uh, that is not captured very well. For example, in this case, I uh, probably the, the, what's that called? The optics is a little bit off when you take the photo. So. As you can see, the histogram is like have a very kind of like small range here. You can stretch the histogram a bit, then it looks much better like this one. So, um, I mean, stretching this, typically what you can do is like, you, you, you know what's the CDF, right, the cumulative uh, distribution. So you, you can, like this, most of the case, like how you do the equalization will be simply try to uh, mix the C CDF as like, linear as possible, like this case. And uh, it's very easy to do. And uh, there's function to do that. And actually, you can write your own function like, with a couple lines of code. Um, and uh, another concept for image is like, um, often that uh, we can see image as a function. For example, like we can think of a, an, a, what, just a Typical image is two dimensions, right? We can think of it as a two-dimensional functions. Um, so, uh, like like this one, basically. So you have uh, one argument, like one argument i and one argument j. If a function, like let's say i, for example, i j, something like that, and then i, for example, i one one will be this value here, like sixty two. Um, and uh, and yeah, this is just another illustration. So um, 
so if if you have grayscale image like this, then uh, then the the range of that image will be just grayscale values, right? Like, like this one here. And if you, I have color image, then I will have the function. Actually, it's not just scalar; will be like uh, what's that called? Not scalar, so vector. Then um, I like this case color image. I I will have like three different values here. And um, I'm, I'm also like, it can be not just brightness or intensity. For example, I can have depth image. Like this one is captured by probably a keynet. And then like, if you kind of match this image, you will get like some 3D information. Right? So again, a very simple concept here. So now move on to something that is more uh, kind of the main topic to this, like some filters. And uh, you can think of filters as just kind of some system to, if you think of the image as some function, so the system is going to do some massage, like modification of your function. Um, for example, like you can use your uh, top, your filter to do some feature extraction, for example, trying to extract edges, corners, and blobs, or like you can even like have filters to do like super resolution in painting, denoising, and so on even though it's not as common nowadays, honestly, because it's not the uh, best method to do that, honestly. But uh, still, like, it's very important. I guess like, it's low level. We'll just quickly go through some of this. So um, so as I said, like you think of the image as a, just a function, and then you can think of filter as nothing, but some kind of system that is going to modify this function and have another function coming out. Um, so this is just some example, like you can use filters to do deloising, like, like you have soft pepper lines. Huh? Actually, I, maybe I will jump my head. Like, do you know like what kind of filters we use here? Have you any idea? Open and close. Uh, not really. But actually it's a good suggestion. I'm not sure if you use open and close, what, what will you get? Um, A anyone or like even not not correct guess maybe <laughs> make some guess here besides uh, open and close hearing none so I guess we move on then we we'll see the answer later on so uh, and um, we can also do super resolution like this one where right? you have like some low resolution photos painting and then like you try to make a high resolution. Honestly, it's a pretty tough uh, problem here. And uh, this, this, this looks pretty, pretty cool. I mean, uh, but most of the time is, uh, but now this to tell is much better, but you may not use, uh, at least you, it's not some simple filter. Uh, maybe some adaptive filter you can do like results like this. And also in painting, uh, if you remember last time we mentioned that this problem called in painting is basically I don't know why they call it in painting. Uh, I mean, yeah. So, but anyway, like you want to remove some of this stuff, like like this Monty Python stuff, like remove this scratch here, or or maybe like you want to remove watermark from an image, like you can use in painting for that. And uh, this is the same slides. I don't know why it's uh, can we where is that? What's the so special about this? Anyway. Um, so let, let's give the first example, a very simple example, a box filter. So what it does is, as you can see from the equation here, I have the original image, uh, and I have the final image, output image. So if I look at the n and m pixels, I mean, I shouldn't say pixels, n and m pixel of the final image, it will be just equal to a sum of actually uh, average of like a number of like input pixels you can see like it was it was bas basically something over like the label of uh, n and m way right? so it's just like sum over the m minus one and actually i have another kind of slide for that i will just jump ahead so um something like this so it's basically 
you, you are just something if you you have the you if it, it is like you are applying uh this filter to the image uh, let me just show it here so what i mean is like if this is the original image then i apply this filter it's basically just have this filter let's kind of like uh step by step going through the image and then just uh essentially do a dot product with the each of the path uh, each patch of an image that is uh, it went through <coughs> and um so for example here so if i look at the first one i i'm trying to have this patch to a dot product with this guy it's all COA, so i will just get seal here as i move on i have this mostly seal but this multiplied by 90 i got 90 then over by 9 then i have 10 here then move on have 20 and so on 30. so it is very simple so for example what is this quick quick uh arithmetics what's the number for this one? Oh yes cool you pass uh i don't know middle school <laughs> <laughs> so thanks thank, thank you so much honestly yeah it, it's really boring like with no feedback like i really appreciate that thank you <laughs> um i may even fall asleep honestly but I, I never did try that but um I, I did try to like fell asleep for one second like, on the highway then then i told my colleague about it i said yeah it's very common it's the first time you did that <laughs> <laughs> well yeah it's first time I, I don't know why he managed to do it so many times without killing himself but he said like, yeah it's very common yeah. <laughs> yeah i did it all the time <laughs> so uh, anyway so um and this is a box filter and uh, uh this is an example here so a realistic example you have an image i have an image like this i do a box filter and uh what, what you see is like what, what do you see like <coughs> i would say it's not really uh, it, it did have some smoothing effect here apparently it's like a low pass filter um but what else you can say like do, do you have anything you want to comment Um, honestly, it's not very ideal. Eh? If you think of this as a kind of, kind of low pass, like smoothing the image, uh, maybe it's not too clear here. Yeah, it's quite clear on my screen, but I guess it's not very clear here. It's that you, you can see some artifacts here, like that's uh, quite a bit artifact. Like uh, you can see some horizontal line here and there, like it's a vertical line here and there also. Um, but uh, yeah, on the screen it's not very obvious. Um, so, uh, but it's a very simple filter. Uh, you you have better. Uh, uh, yeah, we will s you will see better filter later on. So do the same like smoothing job. So um, so image filter. So we already mentioned some applications. I do, this, this is just repeating. But okay, let let's see like do some quick exercise just to check your understanding here so what do you expect the first one it looks like i have a filter this one Anyone? Oh yeah, yeah, really good, really good. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't do anything. I'm, I'm. Hopefully, it's not. I, I didn't mean to be a tricky question. It doesn't do anything. So, how about the second one? Like, what? Yes, yes, it will shift the image a bit. Yeah, actually, in this, yeah, left. I'm, I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm, actually, I'm not so sure it's left or white right, or it will shift it horizontally. I need to get down to do some drawing like to get it right or left or right. But yeah, you expect some shifting. So how about this one? What do you expect? So first I look at the filter. What does it look like? Um,
So um, uh, just think of like two different directions here. So let's say if I, I don't have um, this filter, you see like the two directions have different effects here, like horizontally and vertically. So let's say if I have like, actually what, what is this matrix is like equal to one, two, one, this column vector multiplied by a word vector, one, zero, one, something like that. And uh, so in a sense, you can also think of like you're applying uh, one filter like this one first and then uh, apply this filter like second. So, oh, sorry, that's a minus one here. So it didn't. Oh, wait a sec. Everyone gets what, what I wrote down here. So I'm not sure how was T you are in terms of like matrices uh, that, that kind of multiplication and so on. Yeah. Um, I, I can go really rusty from lots of stuff. So I, I don't assume any knowledge from you guys. Uh, so, um, but uh, okay. So uh, anyone is fine with that? Or like, do, do you remember like some matrix multiplication? Like if I multiply by, um, okay, it's basically if I multiply that by this column vector with this row vector here, um, then I will basically get a three by three matrix, right? Something like, so in general, if you have a, a M by K matrix multiplied by K by M matrix, you get a M by M matrix. And if you remember, like if I have, let's say, uh, X, Let's say I have a matrix like A, A is this M by K, and then like B is this K by M. Then I have this A times B, let's say equal to C here. Then the C, the I, J element will be something like A, I, K multiplied by B, K, J, right? K is sum over from, okay, this is small k here. Let me write this big k. k is something from one to big k here. So of course here, like I have this is uh, three by one times one by f one by three. So the sum here is doesn't have a sum actually. So I this element will be just like one times one here. And this element will be one times zero, and this element is one times minus one, and then this is a like two times one, and two times zero, two times minus one, so on and so forth. So anyway, so now I, I assume everyone you get this. So now, uh, let's say if I just want this filter, I forget about this big filter first. If I just want this tiny filter, one, two, one, what do you expect to see? What's actually happening with these linear filters? I follow, I follow what you mean by the block, the yeah. box filters, yeah. but I feel like we made a week, and I don't follow how this is working. Is that like I make a leap because the size of filter changes now? So now it's not uh, feet by feet, but I certainly go to feet by one. I think he means how the filter works. Yeah. Like it's going increment. It goes pixel by pixel across, yeah. and it checks, and it takes the average of that pixel value. So you'll start, if it's a 255 by 55 image, you'll start at one one, yeah. and then you'll you have to add a buffer because your image will also start at one, and you take that average all around that. Uh, around that pixel value, when all those pixel values will multiply. Okay. And you take the average, right? You find by nine, and that's the assigned value, right? You reassign a new value at that pixel. Yeah, you then, then uh, or you, you assume like, uh, have a separate memory to, right. uh, yeah, that would be easier. Right. Yeah, so, um, yes, but uh, let, let me go back to here maybe. So if you, Look at this one again. I, I can have different values here. Let's say if I, I don't have like all one. Let's say if I have something else. Let, let's say I have this one, two, one, as I said. 
as the filter. Now I said lock a box. I don't know what uh, what should I call it, like a line filter. I don't know what it's called. But anyway, then if I want to compute values, for example, at, at this point here, then we just say copy this thing. You can think of like overlay it on this one and compute dot product of this with this this thing here. So what I mean is say like this value here, the output at this point here will be just equal to like uh, CO, CO90 and dot product. So what, what I mean by dot product will be like element wise multiply and then sum them together. So then will be like, will be just equal to 90 in this case, right? So then, then this, this, this value will, will be 90. So, uh, and, um, and give another example, for example here, what do I have? I will be equal to 90 multiplied by 1 and 90 multiplied by 2 and then 90 multiplied by 1 and add them all together. So therefore at this point here is something like, what's that? The, uh, this is a uh, sixth grade question or something like that, I guess. 360, yes, something like that. Yeah. So, okay. So, um, um, uh, okay. I I guess I uh I will try to answer my own own question. So um so uh I hope I didn't confuse you without the normalization factor. If I put a one fourth here, so it, it's very similar to this guy here, but I'm I'm uh, again like doing uh, some smoothing, like doing an average, but only doing smoothing in one direction, only on the vertical direction, but I, I ignore anything on the uh, horizontal direction. So then you can think of like if you did some DSP or cell processing, I'm doing a low pass filter in the vertical direction on the image. So, and then as you can expect, maybe then, uh, and uh, horizontally, that will be like a high pass. So I basically do a low pass vertically and then high pass uh, horizontally. So then the final image will be like that. So you can see that you're trying to, because the high pass in effect is, um, if you have something smooth along the, for example, on this face here, something smooth, then the values here will be pretty close, right? For example, here, maybe I have the value is like uh, 50, 50, 50, right? Maybe all the same. And my filter is like one seal minus one, right? So therefore, we'll be just cancel. Then we'll just get seal here. So it, it will be just stuck here. But if I, on some of these edges here, for example, like here, like if I have an edge here, then my value will be something like maybe uh, pretty dark, like, uh, uh, I don't know, 20. And then maybe like, uh, 20 again, and then I get pretty bright, maybe like uh, 200, something like that. So if I have filter going through that, like 1, 0, minus 1, I have value now what, minus 180, something like that. But anyway, the magnitude itself will be, if I only consider magnitude, the magnitude will be big, right? So I, I actually, I yeah, here is only displaying, displaying the absolute value here. So therefore, as you can see, like what it does is like trying to detect all the vertical edges here. Yeah. So uh, um, it is called the swap back filter. I'm not sure we'll talk more about that like maybe uh, next week. And this will be very similar. Okay, this, this will be something like I have one zero minus one. This matrix is like that way. So you can think of it as like doing a horizontal low pass and a vertical high pass. So, uh, and then in that case, we'll be detecting uh, horizontal edges. And um, so how about this one? What do you expect to see?
just get like brighter? Huh? Does it just get brighter? Uh, I say that again. Does the final image just become brighter? Uh, no. Oh, okay. You see, this actually seems to amplify the image, uh, but be careful if you look at the total energy or something like this. Sum up to one way, right? and you have two minus one. Therefore, like the total thing sum up also sum up to one. So you don't kind of like uh, what that look okay. magnify that image. Uh, the the brightness. Um, so here, interestingly, what we have is like this part is like a kind of a low pass where it's moving the image. And this is just kind of brighten up the image a little bit and then they you subtract the smoothing down. So it's, it's actually uh, have a name called like unstrap masking. Actually, I, I have some uh, slides later on. Here is a bit jumping forward. The effect is I like kind of sharpen the image somehow. So, uh, um, of course, uh, you can use different low pass and you have basically the same uh, effect. Uh, I shouldn't say same effect, we have similar effect. So, uh, with different low pass, you can sharpen the image in, I mean, different way, I would say. So and this this is what you have here. It looks a little bit much sharper. Um, yeah. And um, another few another example of a filter like um, the filter we mentioned earlier is like a kind of linear filter. Where it's like uh, yeah, I will talk about okay. Give give a definition of linear filter. But here, like I have um. You can also like have something actually nonlinear, so it's just an image segmentation example. So very simple example. In this case, I, I just use kind of simple thresholding to do a kind of very rough segmentation. So in this case, let's say I, I would just set a, the output to the maximum values, like to to really white when the values is like brighter than like for example hundred. And if it's darker than 100, then we'll just set it to completely dark. So therefore, I have kind of a defect like this. Um, so, oh, as I mentioned, I, uh, this is some property that about filters, as I mentioned, linearity probably is the most important. Actually, I don't remember the other names. For example, homogeneity, I need to take it up if someone told me that. Uh, his filter is homogeneous. I definitely do it to Wikipedia like right away, because uh, I I won't I, I I definitely won't blame you if you don't remember like uh, kind of like terminology like this. But li linearity, I, I think you should you should know that because it's really common and across like all, all kind of area. So when we say like something is linear, it just means that if you apply on the kind of weight the sum of that input will be like equal to kind of weigh the sum of the output, something like that. So as you can see, if I apply on this image, this like this operation or like this filter, on this image itself is a weigh the sum of the input to two different images, then would be like I first operate to the first image and then weighted by the same coefficient alpha here and sum by like beta of uh, output F, I mean operating the second image. So, and um, I'm sure you see that like many many times in like for example DSPM uh, control or other or other courses. And another thing is a uh, stability. Again, I, I I'm not sure. I I don't think it's really so popular in lotion like when we talk about filters. It's, uh, stable in image processing, um, but for completeness, I, I I don't know who I forgot like, where I copied this slide from. But okay, I, it's okay for completeness. I'll just include that. Invertible it makes sense. So we we say a filter is invertible if we can. Okay, you you filter it somehow or like you operate somehow to get a new image, and somehow you can find a invertible filter to just convert it back. So I, okay, maybe I'll just ask you like among the okay, go back to D 
this a couple of them so which one is invertible which one is not invertible yes uh, one of course is invertible because it do nothing yeah uh, Uh, how about three and four? Don't the integrals have to add up to like zero or something in order for it to be? Uh, oh, invertible just means. Oh, okay. Uh, you mean? Uh, like oh, it's hard to say actually. I, honestly, I don't know what's the rule for that. Maybe you need to get, uh, just guess a little bit. So it just means whether you can invert that back. Do you think you can invert that back if you you have that uh, E flat like this? Um, uh, I don't think so. Right? Actually, honestly, even you do the um, uh, if we go back to let's say even smoothing, like it's it's, it's in general it's not invertible. Um, so uh so then while you use Photoshop you can press Ctrl C to go back. <laughs> so okay. Uh, yeah of course of course it didn't of course it saved the original image, I'm sure. Like you when you press Ctrl C you just go back to the original. Actually m many most of the operation is not invertible. Um and uh, so and uh, okay, I'm, I'm, I mean, yeah, causality for image processing. I'm not sure it's very important. Also, it's a little bit weird, but I, I'm sure you saw that like in uh, other cell processing. I mean, like in general, one D cell processing. It 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 when you say it's causal, it just means that like your output only depend on the previous inputs. Yeah. So if, if for images, like, it would be like that. Like you operate the image let's say one pixel at a time, then for this pixel, it only depends on the uh, earlier pixel, or oh, I, I shouldn't say earlier, it only depends on pixel in this region, something like that. So I, I honestly, I don't think like anyone care about causal filter like in image processing. So therefore I, I don't think I will elaborate much more. I mean, most of the time is, um, I don't know, yeah, maybe that, uh, yeah, I, I don't see much uh, significance here. So shift invariance may be more interesting, like you also see in DSP. Uh, so it's just saying that like you, kind of like the behavior is kind of the same everywhere as you a apply the filter. Um, so more precisely, if I have the image is shifted a little bit and I apply the filter to that shift the image, it, in effect it should be just the same as the output of that original image but then shift it. Or equivalently, you can see that like it, it means that the shift operation and also the filter operation is interchangeable. You can first do the shift or you can first do the uh, um, uh, filter and it will get you the same outcome. So um, let's see. Just another kind of like uh, question to check your understanding, like um, moving average. So or the box filter here is that shift invariant. Yeah, of course, like, we can just uh, try it to, from the definition, try to check, verify that. So if I have shift invariant, if let's say I sh first shift the image like this, I shift by like NCO, MCO pixel, 
and then I operate that uh, shift the image then okay then we'll be just applying this operation to this guy right so I, I have this here basically so essentially I just copy this I mean replace m by m minus m naught and m by m minus m naught here so then and if I look at this what, what is this this is actually the same as the definition of this g m n with like m minus m naught and m minus m naught so um that that means that like it the output is the same as the original this is g of course the original image but then i shifted it it's the same as i first shifted and do the operation so okay, okay it doesn't matter it sounds confusing you can look into that so but it's it's yeah just trust me and uh, and um and also like we probably want to check okay linearity when we have moving off moving average or box filter um it's it's linear right so i hope you guys will agree that it's linear um so okay let, let, let's see actually all, whenever you can write a filter as we showed earlier it's always linear right because what we have is like we have some kind of filters let's say i i take a particular values here like particular pixels i need to compute and then let's say if i have just a filter earlier on just maybe i have a filter like this one 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 and uh for this value if i want to compute the outcome at this pixel here then we'll be just have some dot border with this guy right and and to get the output so now if i have if i want to check linearity basically i will have like two images so i i have this image original input image is actually the input of oh, oh sorry sum of like two uh, let's let's ignore the weighted sum just the sum so if i just have the sum then let's say i have i1 and i2 and have some values here like that's that's for i1 and this is i2 for some value here this is i1 and i2 and then if i and um, let's say i1 here is like a1 a uh, a1 b1 c1 and this is like a2 b2 c2 and then if i then the sum image will be a1 plus a2 b1 plus b2 c1 plus c2 the three pixels there then if i apply to this filter what i get will be just the sum where it will be like a1 plus a2 plus b1 plus b2 plus c1 plus c2 and of course this will be the same as applying the filter to individual image so again a1 plus b1 plus c1 plus i am the sum together basically so i apply the filter to the first image i get the sum of a1 plus b1 plus c1 apply the second image get c2 a2 plus b2 plus c2 and if i sum together is equal to this guy so anyway um again um you can just go back home to verify so apparently it's linear and uh for flash holding um okay this one i would just really ask you so for flash holding like is is that linear like remember what's flash holding that we use that for cementation for example if i have um the input let's say f and m is bigger than some t then i have g and m is equal to 255 and then uh, otherwise i will have like g and m equal to zero let's say or maybe I, I write it better like that and and equal to 255 
or zero if f and m bigger than t otherwise will be equal to zero so is this thing linear no yeah yeah that's uh yeah we, we can check okay so of course if it has to be linear then uh they if i have like two images i say f1 and f2 uh, apply this filter let's say f s f1 plus f2 should be equal to s f1 plus s f2 so if it's linear now let me just say if f1 is equal to that for that particular pixel is equal to let's say t is equal to like 101 and let's say f1 is like 100 and f2 equal to 50 then s f1 plus f2 this sum image is at that particular pixel is 150 right so operating to this threshold operation i should have the output is like 255 right but if I apply to individual one, I will get this one is a zero, and also this one is zero, so therefore it's not linear. Yes, yeah. Um, so, uh, okay. Five, oh, okay, I'm not sure finally. Um, so, uh, uh Two more things I like to talk about. Uh, not two more, actually. Uh, probably a little bit more, but uh, two more main things I want to talk about uh, is uh, correlation and um, convolution. Um, and uh, correlation is nothing but actually what we have been doing about the box filter and all the filters we're showing is, is already we are doing correlation. So basically you have the filter and you are, you are doing a dot product of that filter to a patch of the image and that is the co computing the correlation. And uh, how about convolution? Actually, how many of you guys already have taken DSP and uh, cell processing and so on and so forth? So what's convolution? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, anyone? I, I saw a hand. Another hand. I saw your hand, I honestly. Derek, I remember your name. Oh. You should give me a candy or something like that. <laughs> I actually keep my memory for like three days. <laughs> it's almost a record. <laughs> Else. I, no, no one take, have taken DSP or so on. That's that's weird. It's not mandatory. I I thought that it should be. It's not. Uh, really, DSP is not uh, in the what's that called core or electrical? Or, or electrical. Huh? Electrical. Oh, electrical it is. So but I think most of you guys are electrical, right? Because I see the only a small fraction. So, uh, convolution, uh, yeah, it's very similar as I, oh, what's your name? I will try to remember one name at a time. Me? Yeah. Evan. 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 Yeah, I think you were you are in my class last year, is that? No, so, no. I'm sorry about that. No, no. I, I only remember your face. Kind of, kind of like, okay. Yeah. So, um. Yeah, so you, we have, uh, yeah, actually what Evan like, mentioned is very much similar to correlation, right? So if you say, put it that way, that's what's the difference of correlation and convolution. No, actually, uh, uh, cross product will give you a, a vector dot product will give you a scalar. It's uh, not a very good um, uh, guess. So, uh, 
so uh, basically, like uh, nothing really that special. The convolution is just weird in terms of math because like correlation is very natural. You think of that way. Right? You just have the patch. You pull the patch and you you just do the dot product. Or like I mean, like if you think of the filter as a patch, and you you go through the image as as we show earlier, and then like for if you want to compute the whatever uh, the uh, yeah correlation at that particular pixel, then you just say like, have the filter kind of do a dot product with the neighborhood of that pixel. Okay, it's like here. Correlation is very clear, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, I should try to. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so um, and uh, convolution is almost the same, but it's like a kind of flip. Uh, in one D, it'll be something like that. If you have, uh, if you have like, let's say you have two signal here, I have another signal here. So if I do, let's say I have, uh, this do a correlation of this guy, then I will have just sliding this thing, right? Sliding this thing, and then trying to do a dot product of this part with this thing, right? Now, the convolution will be like, you first flip these things here. So I flip this guy into this thing, and then do a correlation. And that's it. So we will ask uh, why it's so stupid, that kind of definition. Uh, no one asked this question. Like, it, it just sounds like totally stupid. Like, why we should flip it? Um, but uh, there's a couple of reasons. Like, one reason is that mathematically it's much uh, elegant uh, in terms of convolution compared to correlation. Um, I, I will elaborate on that like, later on. I guess one of the slides have that. But uh, so and um, okay. For example, like just give. One quick, um, uh, quick uh, example, not example, a quick property why convolution sometimes is better. So um, when I have correlation, let's say if I have uh, H, F, and G, let's say I have three different functions here. So I can do correlation, let's say, you can think of like, okay, I have H is the filter, I correlate with like f is the image, but I can also think of like f is another filter, right? So h correlate with f, and then try to correlate with oh yeah, so correlate with g, something like that. So and uh, the problem is like I need to be very careful when I write something like this because. Correlation is not associative. What we mean by associative is that like the order matters. Whether you do this first and do this first, you don't get the same thing. Um, but convolution, on the other hand, is associative. So I, I don't need to care about the bracket. So uh, I have the star is the convolution. I have HF star G. I either do this first or do the other way one first is still the same. So um, and as I said like this the convolution definition, as you can see like therefore like correlation I have the pass sign here, right? And convolution is like I just first flip it so I have the minus sign here. So uh, and you you we can also write okay if you look at that I, I can I can think of this convolution as okay H convolve is F. I can also flip this thing here. Like if I flip this image here, then the index will be just flip, right? So H flip is just a like flip of this image here. So therefore like what I mean is like the UV pixel of the original image will be equal to the minus U minus V pixel of the flip image, right? So okay. So then I, I can change the index here. As you can see, I sum over u from minus k to k. I can think of like I sum over k to minus k, then I can flip the index again. I'll get this here. Then immediately you can see that uh, doing a convolution is actually equal to like you flip it, uh, flip the image, and do the correlation. Uh, 
or fit the filter to the correlation. Um, so that's convolution. Um, convolution is commute. I'm not going to go through that. So it just means that like if you do h star f is equal to f star h. Um, commute up to the boundary condition. Typically, you go to boundary, you have some problem. If you ignore the boundary con condition, then uh, actually uh, they uh, they are the same. So uh, as I already mentioned, I, they it has the nice associative uh, property. Uh, also, I'm not going through this. If you're interested, you can. Or actually, you can. Yeah, it's very simple. You can try to derive yourself also. So basically, if I um, yeah, if I top, do the convolution first, like for G M H M, then F is the same as I, I first convolve like H M F and then convolve with G. So as I mentioned, I sort of summarize is commutative, associative. Um, but as I mentioned, like, correlation is not associative. We can easily uh, track that because now we know the, the relationship of like uh, correlation and convolution. So correlation between B and C is just equal like you fit B and then do a convolve <coughs> with C, and then like this operation can be replaced by like flipping A and then convolve with this guy again. So, but if we do the other way one, then we have like A fit star B and then try to uh, correlate with C, then it will become like A fit B fit C. So this, I will leave you as homework or something. No, actually I won't because <laughs> it, it will be painful for the TA to track that. <laughs> so um, he, he'll complain about that. Uh, but honestly, to be very honest, when you really want to understand something, especially if you are in graduate school, really, you need to, uh, once a while, really need to go back to the base and try to derive steps. That's the only way you can, uh, because like, when you go, when you try to go to graduate school, I, I don't know what, what your goal is, you're probably not trying to earn money to go to graduate school, right? You will be in a very kind of like, as in, I don't know. Yeah, you see me, you know that you should go to graduate school to earn money, right? So otherwise I won't be here. So if I, yeah, that's what I'm, on, what I'm saying. So you, you go to graduate school trying to, I don't know, maybe uh, eventually have uh, a little bit tiny, little bit contribution to science or whatever. So if you want to do the tiny, tiny little bit, or sometimes a little bit more, um, you, you cannot just pull a package here and there and use a library and here and there. Um, you, you need to know deep down that function, how it's implemented and so on. So, and you have to be able to get into details. So then, you, you, yeah, um, to get into the details, that means that you need to be able to derive some of the stuff. Uh, especially the, the research area that you are really working on. Yeah. So anyway, and uh, and also another property is uh, distributive. Uh, over, uh, distribute, I mean the product can distribute over like, not product, the convolution operator can distribute uh, over like addition, so as like this. And uh, scaling factor can pull out and so on and so forth. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this is just like some kind of code that you can use to do convolution and correlation in MATLAB or like Octave. Um, so uh, you, you can do this filter too that for, for correlation is basically what we have talked about like for maybe over half of the lecture is about correlation and it's basically a filter operation. So if you want to do the actual conv convolution, then you need to do this conv2 operator here. So of course, I, as you know that, uh, as I mentioned, a convolution or correlation uh, is basically like you flip one of the 
input and then do the operator. So for example, like if you want to, uh, if you do want to do convolve like uh, an image with a filter is essentially the same as you first flip the filter and then do a correlation with the image. So it's like this. So, so this is just basically flipping the filter. Um, Actually, I have a typo here. That shouldn't have like two here. Yeah, that that one have a two is basically you flip the filters horizontal and vertically will be the same as like you rotate it two times, right? So this one, or you can do like rotation F like two times. And uh, that. Filter linear vertex shift invariance. I, I see you guys are kind of the atten attention is like sleeping, so I guess I quickly went for. Okay, th th um, I, I yeah, I I don't think this example is useful, so I guess I will skip this. So I guess the main main uh main thing I need to deliver, make sure you guys got it, is like, okay, the difference between correlation and convolution, hopefully now you know what's the difference now, so when someone asks you what's convolution, then you can explain that, oh, it's nothing, it's really correlation, but you need to flip one of the input. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, so, yeah, here I, I won't elaborate much. It's again like when you implement some of the stuff, then really in practice, oftentimes you need to care about the boundary conditions. Uh, and there's lots of options there, whether you want to do some padding or you will just ignore the boundary. And, um, and uh, it's, it's kind of up to you, honestly. So, for example, it's very often to do a zero padding, just like you expand the image mm -hmm. so that you. You, you will just result in the same output image. I mean, I shouldn't say same, output image with the same size. Um, uh, yeah, I guess I did just summary slide for that. Uh, is I, uh, we have, convolution have lots of nice property, but conceptually is a little bit more complicated because you're flipping. Correlation is conceptually very simple, but then like uh, you you have, I mean, less nice property there. And uh, when this, of course, if your filter is symmetric, then the two is basically the same because like you flipping it is the same as not flipping that. Um, okay, I, I'll just um, we mentioned box filter. So let me also show you another better kind of filter for smoothing. It's typically a Gaussian filter. It's basically just have your filter coefficients is defined by this Gaussian function here. It's like kind of smooth the uh, decaying, like, I mean, in all directions. So in that way, like, you will have, um, probably you cannot see, I'm not sure you can see it. Maybe I do that, you can see it. So do you see the artifacts? Like here Gaussian filter looks a bit better, like box filter you kind of clearly see the artifacts, like the horizontal and vertical like shadows. Mm -hmm. And uh Gaussian filter is basically just a low pass filter essentially. And I and one thing I like to mention is again like you have filters that is in this case separable. I I didn't actually define what we, I mean by separable, but I already illustrate that earlier on. So I have filter for example like uh, one two one one minus minus one minus two minus one. I said that I can write it as like one two one multiplied by one zero minus one. So if I can, um, what's that word? Uh, Decompose, yeah, the um, the matrix into a product of two matrices, like this, like horizontally and vertically. I mean, write the matrix as like 
ไอ้ฮอร์ซอนทัลวัตเตอร์สอร์วัตเตอร์กับวัตเตอร์มัลติพาร์ทแบบฮอร์ซอนทัลวัตเตอร์ then it's a separable filter because in that case I I can really think of like first apply the h o r i z o n t a l filter and then what apply the vertical filter or like the other way one uh, and um, and this is kind of example for so what what's the advantage is that like if I do that uh, if if filter is separable in general I can uh, gain in terms of like computational uh, I mean. Uh, reduce computational uh, cost there. So, for example, like here, the filter. If I nine, nine by nine filters, I can have like four four point five times speed up, something like. So, be because as you can see, like if I do it by brute force, let's say it's a p p the filter if, uh, with size like p times q, then the number of operations is about like m times m times p times q. But if I separate them, then It will be a kind of like n times n and then p plus q. So typically, you will have like some uh, gain in terms of uh, kind of speed. Um, okay, we skip that. I'm actually this is the thing that I show you earlier on that i s actually use a medium filter to do that and. Uh, This uh, a medium filter. This is an okay. Medium. So, um, do you guys know what's medium filter? Actually, uh, sometimes I guess a, a good skill is like you just guess like when you heard the name. If the the inventors really did a good job, probably you just heard the names and you you can get, kind of guess like what they did. Okay, so. What do you expect? Like voice medium filter here. Uh, okay, by the way, do you know what was medium I in terms of uh, statistics? Middle value in a set. Is it that guy? The middle value in a set. Uh, uh, yes, 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 yes. So in this case, medium filter. I guess you you, uh, you almost guess that. Like so, um, it will be like, yeah. I guess maybe Evan can explain that. Like, do you do you think it? Uh, it's good in this case because we have like a white pixel or a black pixel. We'll look around all the surrounding and take the mean whatever the whatever is kind of the middle of everything around it, essentially from what it samples, right? Yes, I guess that is. So um. So basically, like for example, I apply medium filter like in this area, so it will be like again like the rest of filter. We are looking to a patch here, then I will try to compute the median of this patch. The median of this patch will be I have all these pixel values here. As Evan mentioned, the median value is the mid middle, right? Middle middle in the sense that if you sorted all the values there, you pick the middle one. For example, that you have. Some is darker, some is brighter. So I, I have maybe like C O one or like I I don't know what. I, I maybe I should give an example. For example, if I example like actually I should just go to one of my slides. Okay. Uh, no, actually it's not very helpful. <coughs> This example is bad. So let's say maybe I have two, three, four, nine, hundred. No, yeah. Three, 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 four, something like that. Or four. So if you look at that, like this hundred, it looks like a noise way. Because I like, all the rest is a like, pretty small value. This one suddenly is pretty big. Now the medium will be I first saw the all the values. So my value is like two, three, 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 four, four hundred. Right? If I saw the oh, okay, do I have all the values here? Two, three, 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 uh, four, four. Okay, I guess I miss a few. Right? Let's see, three, 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 four, four hundred. Let's say. So therefore, the medium value will be the middle one. Will be this value here. So therefore, like the medium filter over this guy will give me three. So you see, it's pretty nice. It's, it, it, if I do an average, I will get this will be kind of ski. Uh, what's that word? Like kind of like, I will um, I I will kind of 
make a strong bias like to a much larger values if I just take an average. If I take an average, I would get, I don't know what is that. Anyway, something like 10 or 20, I don't know. So, yeah? Huh? The 100, you're saying that it's an outlier? Yes, yes, yes. So it's like it kind of like remove the outlier mm -hmm. automatically. So, and, and for the dot pepper lines, you see like all this back um, white dot is like the outliers, right? So in the sense that the medium filter is very effective in, remove, uh, in remo removing these outliers. Okay, so that's it. And uh, I have just some one, two quick slides here. Maybe I'll just show you. So uh, again, it's like unsharp masking, but here we have we show unsharp masking doing a okay. We, what what if you remember unsharp masking is that like we we have the original image we scale it up and then we do a smoothing we subtract that we make a sharp sharpen image right so we, we show earlier so if I use a Gaussian filter you see like we look at halos like that it doesn't look very nice so instead like there's something called bilateral filter that instead of like smoothing like that you're trying to smooth the image while preserving the edge so like this one so then if you use bilateral filter instead then like when you do the sharpening it doesn't have the halos um, and uh, just quick explanation of this bilateral filters is actually conceptually is very simple so all original filters will be only depends on the spatial distance when you apply the filter for example I have a filter here I just say like, do a weighted sum of these guys here right? so if I have a bilateral filters I not just do a Wait a sum. We uh, we also like kind of like what should I say? Uh, I will try to uh, for example, if I try to filter at this point here, I will try to see like how far uh, the values is from this point. For example, these guys are all pretty far from this point here. I mean, in terms of intensity. So therefore, like I will just scale down the weight for this guy. So I'm not going to include this guy. So and this is and. Uh, have some results here. Um, I know you guys are need to one now. So anyway, so maybe I'll just leave it here. So uh, and I'll see you guys next time.